Today, I am talking to you about natural family planning or fertility awareness method or the rhythm method, lots of different names, lots of different ways to do it. So let's talk about it. Welcome back everyone. My name is Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, and I'm so excited to cover this topic today because I think it's one that we traditionally as OBGYNs don't go into enough. And so I'm outside covering it because I thought I'm talking about natural family planning, so I should be out in nature. Get it? Like it's a joke. It's funny. It's also ridiculously hot outside today. So if I pass out today, please, please send help. Just kidding. I think. Okay, so we're gonna just jump right into what natural family planning is, and then I'm gonna go down and talk about each different method because there's lots of different ways to do this, and it's important to understand all your choices so that you can decide what might be best for you if you choose this option of birth control. So it can be called natural family planning, fertility awareness method, the rhythm method, lots of different names, but what it is all based on is that you can get pregnant from five days before you ovulate until one day after you ovulate or release an egg because of how long sperm can live in the reproductive tract. And so knowing all of that, you can time when to have sex and when not to have sex so that you don't get pregnant. And how effective is it? Well, it's got a big range, about 77 to 98% effectiveness. And the reason it varies is because it has to do with exactly how you're doing this and also how dedicated you are. So in order for these methods to work, and they can, you've gotta be dedicated and use them as they are intended to. Benefits of this method, this is great for people who want to not get pregnant and use birth control, but not use any hormones. What's also nice about it is that you really learn how your body works and you can really understand your cycles. And so you can see something maybe even earlier than somebody who's not paying so much attention to their cycles if something's changed and it might be a reason that you want to go see your healthcare provider. Another awesome reason is that when it comes time to wanting to get pregnant, you are so ahead of the game because you understand when you ovulate, when you might get pregnant, when to have sex. So you can really use this for not getting pregnant as well as getting pregnant. But there are some drawbacks and it's really important to cover these. Number one, it takes dedication. This is not as easy as popping a pill. For some people, people who get used to this and it becomes part of their daily routine, yeah, it's gonna feel easy to them. But it really depends on you using the methods appropriately. There's not a lot of wiggle room for user error. The other thing is, is that you've gotta be dedicated to not having sex when you're not supposed to get pregnant. And that means both you and your partner who produces semen. So it doesn't mean you can't have sex, it just means you can't have vaginal sex, or you might need to use another method when you could get pregnant. So it takes dedication if you don't wanna get pregnant. This method is not intended to be used in the first few years of having your period, as well as on the other end of the spectrum when you're nearing menopause, and that's because your cycles aren't regular, and you have to have regular cycles for this method to work. Now, what does regular cycles mean? I will cover that because it actually depends on which specific method you're using. Lastly, one of the other drawbacks of this method is that it might not be reliable if you've got other issues going on, such as other health issues, you know, vaginal infections, taking certain medications. So it just depends, and that's why it's really important if you're considering in this method to review it with your healthcare provider. I'm gonna tell you right now, my show notes ha is always good. I always work really hard to put good resources in there, but it is like for this YouTube. And the reason is, is because there's a lot of information to absorb here. And I think it can be easier if you are interested in a method to go deeper into it on your own. And so I've got a ton of references and resources in the show notes that I really want you to look into. And one of the things I want you to look at first is this infographic from the British Medical Journal. It's an interactive infographic. You can click on it and say, okay, I wanna do the standards, standard days method. How does that work? What's the wiggle room? What's the failure rate? It's just a really, really great interactive infographic and I think you could benefit from checking it out. Let's jump into the methods. First one up, the calendar method. Using just this method alone is about 81 to 86 percent effective in preventing pregnancy. So better than nothing, but not the best thing we've got out there. The way that it works is you need to track your cycles for at least six months before you use this method because you have to see what your cycles are doing and you have to make sure that they're appropriate for using this kind of method. So again, take some dedication. And a quick review on menstrual cycles. Cycle day one is the first day of the full flow of your period. And then it goes till however long, till the last day of bleeding before your next period, that's the last day of your cycle. So the first day that you bleed, full bleed, is day one. And let's say your next period comes on day 29. That means that the last day of that cycle was day 28. So you have a 28 day cycle for that cycle. What you need to do in that six month period is track all of your periods and note how long your cycles are and write them all out. Here's an example of what that might look like. And if you look at these cycles and any of them are shorter than 27 days, this method is not for you. If they are longer than that, keep on going. Now you need to figure out when could you get pregnant or be fertile and when do you need to avoid sex? Here's how you do that. 
So you go through the cycles that you've tracked and you pick your shortest cycle. Let's pretend your shortest cycle is 28 days. What you need to do is now subtract 18 from it. So you get 10. So what you do in this current cycle is go from cycle day one, count out to 10 days. That's when you need to stop having sex or start using a different form of protection like condoms because that's the first day of this cycle where you could get pregnant. Now you go back to those cycles that you tracked, find your longest cycle. Let's pretend it's 30 days. Now you need to subtract 11 from it. So for example, you get 19. Now you count 19 days from your cycle and mark that. That is the last day that you need to abstain from having sex. The drawbacks of this method, well, you can't use it if, you're, if your cycles are shorter than 27 days, and it can be confusing. It involves some math and really making sure that you're not getting things wrong, because missing a calculation means that you could get pregnant. However, there are apps and things that can help with that, but again, it does take some dedication. Method number two, the standard days method. This can be about 88% effective with typical use and 95% effectiveness with perfect use. Keeping in mind that few people are truly perfect, I think it's really important to go off of the typical method effectiveness rates, but hey, you might just be that person who is super dedicated, never misses anything, and so for you, it's gonna be more effective. How to use this method. So you need to track your cycles for a few cycles, the more the better, to really understand where your cycles are at and see if you're a candidate for this method. Your cycles have to be 26 to 30 days long in order to use this method. If they're longer or shorter, this method is not for you. And so if you fall within this range and you can use this method, you need to avoid sex between days 18 and 19 because that's when you could be most fertile and you could get pregnant. There's a couple cool ways to help you do this. So if you go to the cyclebeads.com website, which is here, and I've also got it linked in my show notes, they actually sell little color-coded bracelets that can help you keep track. There's also an app for it too, so you can use it on your phone. And there's a lot more information about this method and how it works and the research behind it on their website, so you can go check it out. Really the drawbacks of this method is that your cycle has to fall within 26 to 32 days, otherwise you can't use it, and you have to make sure that you're actually keeping track of your cycles. Third method, cervical mucus monitoring, also known as the ovulation method or the Billings method. I tend to call it cervical mucus monitoring. Here's your stats, 78% effective with typical use, eh, 97% with perfect use. This is based on the fact that your cervical mucus changes throughout your cycles, and you can track it using a calendar to see if you might be fertile at that time. Here's an example from Planned Parenthood that shows how somebody has tracked it, and based on they can see where their patterns are, they can see the days that they need to avoid having sex. So you can do this a few different ways to check your cervical mucus. So before you pee, you can wipe and put the mucus between your fingers and it can really help to kind of see if it's stretchy or sticky. And I know this may sound gross, but guys, it's your body, it's not gross. So you can see the discharge that way. You can use the discharge in your underwear or after cleaning your hands, you can put one finger into the vagina and get some mucus on your fingers that way and check. And so when you're tracking your mucus, the unsafe days or the days that you should avoid vaginal sex is when the mucus is slippery because that can indicate that you are ovulating but also three days before and after. And so if you're saying, well, Jen, but how does that work for me? Because you're telling me that until it's slippery for those three days beforehand, I could actually get pregnant. Well, you're right. So you kind of have to get to know your pattern and see where you track. So that is one of the cons. Other drawbacks to this method is that some people just don't make a whole lot of discharge. So even throughout their cycle, they can't really see where they're at. So you don't want to use this method if that's the case. And another reason this might not be the best method, other issues can cause changes in your cervical discharge. So infections, using products like douches, which please don't use, please. Also, if you're breastfeeding, this isn't a reliable method and also having sex. So you can't have sex and then rely on this model because that can change your discharge. So it's really good to use this method for at least one cycle to see where you're at before relying on it on birth control. And it can be really helpful to go and see your healthcare provider to talk more about how to do this too. Okay, moving on to the fourth method, the two days method. And this is 86% effective with typical use and up to about 97% with perfect use. Think of this as a simpler version of the cervical mucus method. So what you're gonna do with this method is you're going to ask yourself two questions. You're going to ask yourself, have I had discharge today? And also the day before. If either of these is yes, then you need to avoid having sex or use something like condoms because that could indicate that you could be fertile or ovulating. The benefits of this method, it's a lot simpler and it's really good if your cycle length changes because you're just concerned about today and the day before. The downsides of this method, you need to have three sex-free days in between using it in order for it to be reliable because remember, as I just said, having sex can change your discharge, especially if somebody ejaculates inside of you. And so you have to be abstinent for three days beforehand if you're going to rely on this method. Okay, fifth method. Yes, there's a lot. <laughs> the basal body temperature method or BBT. And I feel like this is one most people tend to be familiar with. 
Effectiveness, we've got 93% with typical use, so pretty good for a typical use method, and 98% with perfect use. So this is all based on the really cool fact that when you ovulate, your temperature goes up by about half a degree to a degree, and then it stays up for a few days. So when you look at your cycle here, your temperature would be a little lower, and then you ovulate and it goes up, and you can see where ovulation occurred, which I think is really cool. And since we know that you're fertile about two to three days before that temperature spike going up, once you've seen where your cycles are, you can understand when you might be fertile in coming cycles and abstain from sex the days that lead up to that temperature increase. So here's how it works. You can't just use any thermometer. You have to use one that's sensitive enough to those tiny changes that I talked about. And so there are specific basal body temperature thermometers that you can order, and they're not that expensive. What you need to do is you need to check your temperature the first thing in the morning. So even before you pick up your phone, before you're laying around in bed, first thing in the morning when you wake up, you have to make sure that you've had three hours of uninterrupted sleep beforehand. And like I said, before you get out of bed and you need to track this daily. And then you write that down or you put it in your phone in an app, and then that data can be put on a graph so you can see what your temperatures are doing. It's best to give this a few months to see where your body is to understand your patterns before you rely on it as a form of birth control. And so the most conservative way to avoid getting pregnant is that you avoid sex from day one of your period up until your temperature has been increased for three days because then you know, okay, you're good, you've ovulated, that egg is gone, you can now safely have sex. The downsides of this method takes a lot of work, right? You've got to make sure that you're tracking your temperature every single day. This is not great for people like me who are night shift workers where you are not having a normal circadian rhythm all the time. Things can throw it off like stress and drinking and illness. There's a lot of no sex days, so that's kind of a bummer. And remember, in each cycle, it can't tell you when to avoid sex until after ovulation has happened. So it's not great for this current cycle and you need to get some data to see where you're at so that you can then know when to avoid sex in your next coming cycles. One of the benefits though, this is great to figure out when you are fertile and so that you can go ahead and have sex when you're trying to conceive, so that's cool. There's actually an app called Natural Cycles, which is FDA cleared for as a form of birth control using this method. And so you can see here, this is an example of what a graph would look like with your data. And you can go to their website and see what it's like and check it out. And I've also got tons more info in my show notes, as I've already said. Lastly, number six, I think we're at, the symptothermal method. And I feel like if you're gonna do natural family planning, this is like really where it's at because it takes into account a bunch of things together to help figure out when you might be most fertile. With typical use, it's about 80 to 88% effective, but with perfect use, about 99.6% effectiveness. So that's like as effective as IUDs, getting your tubes tied. So really a great method if you use multiple data points together to figure out when to not have sex. So most people will combine basal body temperature as well as cervical mucus in this method, but you can also add in other things too, like breast tenderness and other symptoms that might be signs for you that you could be ovulating. There's actually a bit of a more high-tech method called the Marquette method, which I actually, I will say, I didn't even know about until I was researching this topic. And what it is, is it's basically using a fertility monitor to monitor two hormones, estrogen and luteinizing hormone, or LH, which using a fertility monitor will give you a readout of how high your hormones are and how likely it is that you're ovulating and you could get pregnant. I've got a bunch more information in my show notes about that. So if you're somebody who's like kind of high tech and wants to use that stuff, that's that's one way to do it. Okay, tons of information. I reviewed six different methods here. Lots of different ways to make this work for you. I would love to hear in the show notes what you use, if you use it, how it works for you, and how you feel like it's helped you get to know your body. Please go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell if you like this content and you want to see more of it. And as always, go ahead and follow me on TikTok and Instagram for tons more information on birth control, periods, sex, all that good stuff. I cover it all. Happy family planning, friends. Stay safe.